Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 21st, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Times are changing. A new study proves that young women earn more than their male counterparts in 22 U.S. cities. According to a new Pew Research Center analysis, young women in cities like Wenatchee, Washington, Morgantown, West Virginia, and Gainesville, Florida, earn 120% of men's salaries. New York, Washington, D.C., and Los Angeles metropolitan areas are also among the cities where young women are earning the most relative to young men when examining median annual earnings among full-time year-round workers. What is causing this extreme shift in income among young women? Richard Fry, senior researcher with Pew Research, noted that geographically, these are mostly cities along the country's east and west coast. These cities have a higher percentage of young women with higher education degrees. Factor in the types of jobs and industries that dominate these ge geographic areas, for example, jobs in education versus manufacturing. And in places where the average maternal age at first birth is lower, the wage gap is wider. For example, the average age at first birth in Manhattan is more than 31. In essence, if we want to decrease the wage gap in job earnings, we must teach our daughters to live on the coast, earn higher education degrees, seek jobs in cities where education is important to job level, and to have children later in life. Sounds good to me. In other news, does the name Balan mean anything to you? Well, it will. Balan is the first all woman media house in Somalia, creating an opportunity for female journalists to share stories that are important to women. Led by Najran Mohammed Ibrahim, who has worked as a journalist for 12 years and is a founding member of the Somali Women Journalist Organization, Nazrin is one of the few female senior news producers in the country. The all-female team of six will produce content for TV, radio, and online media on issues such as gender-based violence, women in politics, and female entrepreneurs. The project was created to address issues women face working in the media in Somalia such as being ignored and denied promotions to bullying and sexual harassment. Balan's deputy editor, 25-year-old Fadi Mohammed Ahmed, said sexual harassment was rife in the media sector, and she has had to develop tactics to ward off advancements from male colleagues. The brand is called Bilan, which means bright and clear in Somali and will be based in the capital, Mogadishu, at Dawson Media Group, one of the country's largest media organizations. In addition to publishing news and features, Balan will provide training and mentorship from established Somali and international journalists. Balan is being funded by the United Nations Development Program and is set for a year-long pilot. Go girls! In other news, it is widely understood that being wine drunk is a funny joke between women. Some studies have even shown that a glass or two of red wine per day are associated with decreased inflammation, improved blood pressure, and a lower risk of death from coronary artery disease. However, a recent research study has proven the unthinkable, a detraction to the popular ladies' pastime that could convince you to forego your next glass of wine. A team of researchers recently analyzed the connection between genes linked to alcohol consumption and cardiovascular conditions and found that drinking any amount was associated with an increased risk of disease. For a more in-depth look at women and wine drinking, let's hear from Kristen Fuller, the founder of Forward Progression Coaching, who is a certified recovery coach, a facilitator for smart recovery, and helps women change their relationship with alcohol in order to improve their mental and physical health. Welcome to the Feisty, Kristen. So glad to have you. 
you are a recovering alcoholic who now advocates for women's sobriety. In light of this new research, which has determined that drinking leads to disease, please tell us how being wine drunk, which is so trendy and acceptable, actually hurts women. Hi, Tierica. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on the feisty. It is such an honor. So women are, are drinking a lot. <laughs> so the thing about the trend of women drinking, moms drinking wine in the Starbucks venti cup. How do I know this? Because I did it. it. <laughs> so when they're doing that at the, the school parade or the ball games, it's because that's become normal in many communities and many circles. Here's what's scary about that. When women consume too much alcohol, their breast cancer risk goes up 15% at least. Like that's the bare minimum. So by limiting or reducing alcohol right, right out the gate, they're decreasing that risk of breast cancer. During COVID, women weren't having to take, stay-at-home moms, I should say, weren't having to take their kids to school. So the drinking amped up a little more. We're stressed out. We're already home with our kids. We don't have to drive anywhere. They're driving us insane because they're home from school. And the drinking started a little sooner because we don't have to go at three to pick up our kids. And then it started a little sooner. And then out of nowhere, it becomes where we're dependent on that alcohol, where if you don't have it, you, you kind of can't function or you're shaky or you feel crappy. And when I was at the height of my drinking, my nose, cheeks, chest, everything, bright red, puffy, swollen. Um, my hair wasn't growing. My nails were breaking. My liver was sore. I had the beginnings of fatty liver. Um, I was 40 pounds overweight uh, and it was all in the middle because alcohol makes women especially produce more estrogen hormones than necessary. The creepy thing about that is estrogen also helps us hang on to fat. So that's why like we get a beer belly or a wine food baby, you know, and after time, those specific cells that are full of estrogen can contribute to cancer causing cells. So I can go from real vain, want to lose 40 pounds, <laughs> want to have healthy breasts to real serious real quick, because the, the truth is it is really serious to a brain that has suffered any kind of mental health issue, whether it's PTSD, depression, anxiety. Drinking alcohol is the equivalent to pouring gasoline on the fire of your depression and anxiety. So much so that there are women in the recovery community, myself included, that no longer depend on SSRIs or other antidepressants to calm them because their chemicals are working properly. So that for me is the biggest takeaway is not suffering with panic attacks and anxiety and depression. Thank you so much, Kristen, for this wisdom. I had no idea that alcohol makes mental health issues much worse. I need to keep mine in check, so I'm definitely cutting back. If you want a relatable guide to healing without using alcohol as a crutch, visit Kristen on Instagram at Forward Progression Now. Well, it's time for a break. What did a Fox News anchor do when he had a crush on his coworker? Did you hear about a new federal policy that changed the game for gender identity? Answer to these questions right after the break. Don't miss it. Hi, I am Reverend Dr. Brooke Brim, the Minister of Mind, Body, and Spirit. I'm all about encouraging women to be all that they can be. So that's why I started the brand Vegan Soul Foodie, which encourages us to enjoy traditional American cuisine, but with plants. So traditional soul food is a little bit heavy. I created these cookbooks, vegan soul food salads, smoothies, and juices, vegan soul food for meat lovers, and vegan soul food holiday guide. 
and I just got out of a class of teaching vegan soul food to Georgia residents because that's what I do. I teach online how to enjoy soul food made with plants. I write cookbooks and I support women who want to expand their health. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about Fox News host Jesse Waters, who confessed that when he had a crush on one of his colleagues at work and he wanted to spend time with her, he flattened her tires so that he could offer her a ride home? The tactic worked. She asked for a ride and then they became close, eventually getting married. While he obviously thought this was an endearing way to get close to her, I think it's quite creepy. Jesse, what's wrong with you? You see a woman you like and your best idea to get her attention is to trap her so that she has to ask you for help? Ugh. Well, I'm well aware that there are many women who have similar stories to trap men with babies and faking whole personalities until they get the ring. Neither of these tactics is okay or mature. Who taught you that the best way to get a woman to like you is to manipulate her? Is that what you've been doing all your life? Tricking women? What else have you lied about to gain a woman's trust? Ugh, you are creepy McNasty. Of all the women I interviewed for the He's a Good Man segment here on the Feisty News, not one of them has ever said, girl, he tricked me into dating him and I'm so glad he did. Listen, Jesse. And any other man watching the fight see to gain insight into women. Pulling tricks to get a woman to date you is only for men who have low confidence. These men believe no one will love them unless they put on a mask. A man like this will attract a woman with the same qualities. But if you want a high quality woman who loves you for you, who loves herself and is operating in this world authentically, bring your authentic self to her. Walk up to her and tell her you like her and why. An authentic woman will be impressed and excited to meet a man who doesn't try to hide his feelings. And if she rejects you, then she's not a good match because she's hiding who she is and needs someone to play the same games. But if you feel the need to manipulate her to get her to like you, don't slash her tires and cause distress so that you can be a rescuer. You can go ahead and manipulate a situation to work in her favor. Put her name into consideration for a promotion. Solve a problem for her without her having to ask you. Send her lunch. Make her life easier in some way. If you're worried about being me too for showing interest in a woman you work with, don't. I created guidelines for men on how to interact with women in the workplace so that all men know their boundaries and positive ways to show a woman you care. All you have to do is visit engagingwomenatwork.com for the free PDF download of the new rules for engaging women at work. Gentlemen, there is a woman looking for a man just like you. If you fake your intentions to get her attention, she won't recognize you. Be yourself. There's love out here for you, authentically. In other news, the Department of State recently changed its 247 year history by issuing a passport that allows citizens to mark X for gender if they do not identify as male or female. In the updated travel and identification document, U.S. passport applicants may self-select their gender and are no longer required to submit any medical documentation to confirm it, even if their selected gender differs from their other citizenship or identity documents. The Department of State is setting a precedent as the first federal government agency to offer the ex-gender marker on an identity document. This is a win for gender identity and the freedom of self-expression without social constraint. Yes, patriarchy is falling. Mm, so proud. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. 
Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the feisty. 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 Welcome